This is a quick movie just showing you how to use the TurboScan plugin for ImagePro. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is just come to Acquire and Video Digital. And this is going to load the TurboScan um, interface and also the camera driver element here. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to quickly go to the stage view. I'll just show off my pattern here. And I'm just going to initialize the stage. So let me just go to stage, initialize. So this is just going to drive around and uh, go to each one of the corners of the stage so it understands that where it is at the moment. Okay. So while I'm doing this initialization, let's talk about why it's useful to have this uh, program. Uh, really, what we can do with the TurboScan module from Objective Imaging is acquire images that are a lot larger in memory size than we can handle in RAM. Um, this is an excellent opportunity. We can take very large, high magnification scans and we can actually take those and we can view them separately later on on any machine that we want to operate with without creating massive gigabyte files. Right, so we're just coming back to the center now, so I should just be finished where I am. Right, perfect. So this little dot here represents where I am, and this is my area of stage movement here. So what we should also do is just set up the camera. So I'm just going to come to image, and it gives me some control. So actually what I'm going to do is just use the joystick, move me into the middle, and well, that's not too bad in terms of focus. Let me just set that up. It's a little bit dusty, but we'll be fine. Right, so first thing is I can control my exposure times. I'm going to try and keep my exposure time less than 200 microseconds. That enables me to tile this very, very quickly. In a bright field environment where I have a lot of light, this isn't a problem. But obviously, if we move to fluorescence, it will slow down a little bit. So what we'll also try and do is we'll probably do a white balance. So let's just move completely off the slide and we'll just have a look at a, a regular section like this. So you can see now we're actually saturating when we're off the slide. So let's just do an auto expose here. See, I'm going nice and kind of colored. Let's do a white balance. And the final thing we're going to do, because we're going to do uh, effectively image addition, we don't want any errors in the images. So we're just going to say, set up the shading correction. Now we get rid of all those nasty little speckles. So now my camera's done. You can now see we're actually here, so about the slides around here. So I can move back using a joystick, or actually I can say, move X, Y, to stick me straight in the middle, drive around the stage like that which is pretty straightforward. So now uh, I want to take a scan. So first thing, just going to make sure that I'm on the 10x that I am. That's required to know that we're moving the correct distances. And I could do a couple of things. I could uh, select to draw a little region. Maybe I know roughly how big an area I want to scan. But I'm going to set the area by the corners. Okay, So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to say, right, I'm going to drive over to the top left hand corner and say you're the top left. And drive again just using a joystick to the bottom right okay and now press ok now that's my area defined so now I can actually put on here the pattern and we can actually see the grid and the pattern that we're going to scan so now I just press scan now I'm just going to go and scan this area and you can see it scans at quite some incredible speed um, each one of those little blocks represents a field of view, and we know that we're used to scanning one of those in a cla classical system about once every three to four seconds. So this is going nicely, and we can see we're taking quite a large area. So this is going to be a 14,000 by 10,000 pixel image. One thing you can see, actually, that's nice and done. But one thing you can see is I, I've actually missed a little area. So maybe what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to say, well, actually, I want to, I'm going to draw that slightly bigger. I'm going to retile this area. So I can just say again, turbo scan that. You don't have to do this clearly. You can live with having smaller amounts, or maybe you want to be better than me. And oh, actually, we're going to tile the whole area. So I did draw rather than select. So let me just. Uh, let me just put a new area in for that. Let's just cancel that. Let's just go new and we'll take this area here. Okay. Cool. Right. So now let's just scan in the missing areas. Okay. Cool. So now we're doing the right area. 
Cool, and we should now start to pick up any missing information that we've got here. There we are. Beautiful. So now what we've got, I'll just turn off the grid. We've got a really large resolution image. So I can I can zoom into this and you know keep looking and everything's great. Um, but what I can do from here is also I can save this as a workspace. Okay. And I'm going to save this workspace just somewhere maybe on my desktop. I'll just call it James. Um, and that's going to allow me to keep this massive large view that I want to do, this larger than the RAM of the computer view, and allow me to move around freely by pasting memory around. So that's one area. I can then take this and actually you can go to the Objective Imaging website and you can download a free viewer that you can put anywhere to re repeat and look at this image later on. So it's quite a big file as we discussed. It's going to take a couple of seconds to save. So probably uh, down to the fold of my hard disk, probably more than anything else, but it's probably taking the same time to, to save it as it does to scan. But this enables me to, to freely go back to my desk, transfer this file across the network, and then basically just go have a coffee and see how it works. Actually, let's just uh, we'll wait for this to finish and I'll show you that in a second. The other things that I can do with this as well is I could actually say, well, maybe I'm interested in just taking a particular area. Um, I want to just say that I am actually interested in maybe maybe this area. Okay. Well, maybe this is a small little area and I'm interested in this bit. I want to do some analysis. This is still a big area. So I could actually just transfer this straight to Image Pro, either as a mosaic image like this, one large image, and I can change the resolution of that, or as a sequence file, a series of images, which I can then process in Image Pro using a sequence processing macro. So I'm going to just go ahead and just move a mosaic across. Now, one of the things is I can actually do a lot more while we're using this. Inside uh, Image Pro, we also have a series of macros that allow us to control this whole turbo scan area as well. So we have things that we can loop through files and do scanning and set areas. And each one of these can be added to a workflow for anyone to use to do their general imaging. Right, so let's just have a quick look. So now this image is going to pop up into the background. Here we are. So now here is my image, which I can do some thresholding on or wherever I want to do with it. Again, as I say, we could actually take this image and chop it up maybe into 10 and put that into manageable analysis chunks for a regular Windows operating system to handle. So just to let you know, this is a 32-bit Windows 7 machine and it works very simply and very easily. Uh, and the images that I've taken here are very large, uh, but I'm having no problems in moving around with them. Now if I kind of just show you quickly the other thing that I wanted to show you, which was that using the Objective Imaging Viewer, I could be sat at my desk and I can just say that I want to look at this workspace here. Again, it's just going to load and this allows me, let me just turn off all the little options, this allows me to sit, have my coffee and review my slide. Cool. Okay. I hope that helps. If you need any more information, please contact your local dealer or sales office. Thanks.